speaking of our next story, Ron DeSantis, De Sanctimonious, Ron De Sanctis, De Sanctimonious, yep. Ron De Sanctimonious, Luke. Oh, I knew uh, you were going to talk about Meatball him. Meatball Ron, Tiny D, <laughs> whichever one of Trump's uh, nicknames for DeSantis you want to use, appeared on Fox News or the Fox Propaganda Network, as my friend here Josiah calls it, right? And uh, got asked about something very popular right now within the GOP, which is the idea of just getting rid of abolishing different agencies, defunding them in the case of the FBI and DOJ, and then some just abolish. Uh, Matt Gates has called for the abolition of the ATF and others. And Ron DeSantis says, heck yeah, I want to get rid of some federal agencies if I were president and I'll list them. And if I can't get rid of them, here's what I'll do instead. Take a look at this. Are you in favor of, of eliminating any agencies? I know conservatives in the past have talked about closing the Department of Education. Would you do that? So we would do education, we would do commerce, we do energy, and we would do IRS. And so if Congress will work with me on doing that, we'll be able to reduce uh, the, the size and scope of government. But what I'm also going to do, Martha, is be prepared if Congress won't go that far I'm going to use those agencies to push back against woke ideology and against the leftism that we see creeping into all institutions of American life. So, for example, with Department of Education, we reverse all the transgender sports stuff. Women's sports should be protected. We reverse policies trying to inject the curriculum into our schools. That will all be gone. We will make sure we have an accreditation system for higher ed, which is not trying to foment more things like DEI and CRT. So we'll be prepared to do both. Uh, either way, it'll be a win for conservatives. All right. I wow. Wow, wow, wow. So let me, uh, before Josiah jumps in, <laughs> jumps in and gives his thoughts, we would do, here's his list, education, and by do, he means get rid of. Education, commerce, because why not, energy, and the IRS. So no one's going to come to collect your taxes, so we won't fund anything, which is great because we won't have much else to fund because commerce will be gone, <laughs> energy will be gone, education because of woke right <laughs> yeah i i don't even know like so i i actually covered this story earlier today on my youtube channel pondering politics like and subscribe please and listening to it again there were like there's so much crammed into this clip there are parts of it that i didn't notice the first time around when i covered it so first things first I actually got to give Governor uh, DeSantis, I almost called him Governor DeSantis, and we talked about this. <laughs> Trump has ruined his last name in perpetuity for all of us. But I almost have to give Governor DeSantis credit here because he only said the word woke once. He only wow, said it once. Right. I know, kudos to, to Ron DeSantis to Meatball Ron, number one. But number two, when, um, when he was talking about, uh, he said that, I want. I don't want a Department of Education so they can't inject the curriculum, the curriculum. in schools. No curriculum. Isn't that exactly what curricula need to Get be? Get all the curricula out of the schools. What? Yeah. Curriculum has no place in school. Like what? That's the place where curricula ought to be. I didn't even notice that until the until you played the clip. But yeah, the other thing. I mean, just like okay, so no Department of Education, so no educational standards. That's not going to be great, especially when you consider, as we've often discussed, and this is just a blunt fact, but most of the least educated states in this country are run by Republicans. So if you have no federal Department of Education that will hold those states or any state to a certain standard, um, that doesn't fill me with much confidence, number one. Number two, the Department of Commerce, like, yeah, the market doesn't need regulation, says the man who right now is embroiled in a dispute <laughs> yes. with Disney, you know, his biggest tourist attraction, one of the biggest and most powerful companies in the world. And he wants to defang regulation to say nothing of the fact that we've seen the pitfalls time and time and time again when the market is not regulated. But then the third thing, Luke. This And we've talked about this before. This man is so desperate to run to the right of Donald Trump on cultural issues. He is – I don't see a path forward for him in the general. Most of America and even quite a bit of the Republican Party aren't interested in a president hyper-focusing on trans athletes in schools, which is whatever your opinions on it. And obviously, Luke and I are progressive, so we have a very liberal view of it. But even if you disagree – 
It is relatively speaking a niche issue. Why do conservative voters and why should conservative voters in West Virginia and Alabama care about a trans athlete on the swim team? And you're talking about running to the right and him trying to get kind of the Trump energy behind his his movement that Trump had in 2016. Look at the lower third Chiron. It says DeSantis need to break the swamp. Wow. <laughs> really original, Ron. <laughs> really original. I'm it's, not going to drain the swamp. I'm going to break it. <laughs> I don't even know um, how you do that. Drain actually but, makes sense. Drain makes drain, sense. What is, what is breaking the swamp? And um, to what you're saying, it's so... I was having the exact same thought. Let's say that all of the issues he says uh, exist actually exist, which they don't. Most of the time, either you're taking like three people on Twitter and saying, this is the view of the left, or you're taking a problem that maybe is a problem, but blowing out of proportion, or you're just making up problems. Um, like they're teaching CRT to our fourth graders. And that is his message. But let's just pretend that it was all true. All the problems, woke ideology, it's horrible. Still, that being the only thing he ever talks about makes no sense. Okay, even if things were being taught in schools that you really didn't like, there are also other issues, but he only talks about that issue. And then you add the fact that most of his uh, evidence for the problem he's trying to say exists actually doesn't really exist or it's being blown out of proportion. Um, and it makes it all just such a strange campaign uh, to be run. And one thing that I think people forget about Trump's 2016 campaign is it had all the bigotry, it had all the divisive language, it had all of that, but he also did act like he cared about working class issues. He acted like he cared about the offshoring of jobs. He acted like he cared about fighting back against an establishment that has allowed lobbying and big money to influence it. And it was disingenuous. Trump, of course, was just going to go in there and cut taxes for himself and his friends. But he at least paid lip service to those things. And working class Americans care about that. And DeSantis is doing none of that. So he's doing the break the swamp <laughs> with absolutely no message that resonates with people. So I don't really uh, care, I guess, even though it hurts just in any situation to see such a bad campaign strategy, even if I don't want the campaign to be successful, because he'll have to deal with the failure this will cause. Yeah, it, the, the whole thing, uh, I mean, to say nothing of the fact that the agenda itself is impossible, Congress is not going to vote to abolish the IRS or the Department of Education or the Department of Energy or the Department of Commerce. I, I'm just blown away that that's even suggested. But again, to your point, he's not even invoking the same sort of working class populism that Trump obviously, obviously never felt but paid lip service to in 2016. Ron DeSantis has like carved out a niche where he's the culture warrior. And then the other frustrating thing, though, about that, Luke, is note that Martha McCallum never pushes back and says, OK, you say it's a either way, it's a win for conservatives. But Governor DeSantis, are, are you suggesting that, A, you can only win the presidency by appealing to conservatives? And B, if you do win the presidency, are you only going to govern on behalf of conservatives? And this goes back to a recurring thesis of my channel and a recurring thesis of the conversations you and I have. Why is it, Luke? Why is it that no reporter who ever engages with Ron DeSantis ever asks them or him or people like him the same question that they would ask of any Democrat, <laughs> which is how are you going to reach across to the left or to left leaning independents or Democrats? If they never get that question. What are you going to do to unite the country? That's always the presumption made of Democrats. Joe Biden and every Democrat who's ever run at any time or ever shall run at any time, they have to unite the country, even though if we really want to stick to a partisan basis. There are generally more Democrats than Republicans. Democratic policies are much more popular. So if anybody shouldn't have to appeal to the other side, you would think, at least based on electoral math, it would be Democrats. But no, they're expected to still reach across the aisle for the sake of bipartisanship. Where's Ron DeSantis's bipartisanship, Luke? And why is he never asked about it? And as you're saying, the second part of that was, if I can't abolish these agencies, I'm going to use them 
reform them to try to destroy leftism or whatever to get leftism out of it I'll and it goes them. back to i'll weaponize the federal government against liberals that's what it is even though we've been told for so long the government's being weaponized against conservatives without evidence here they're campaigning on weaponizing the government against leftism and uh desantis said you know you should like me because i'll destroy was it leftism in this country in that other clip that went yes, viral yes and we, we talked about how imagine if biden in a speech he just called out the anti-democratic views of MAGA Republicans and went, but not all Republicans, not all Republicans, not all Republicans. And they were like, oh, he hates the uh, Republican part of the country. He hates Republicans. And uh, even mainstream media was like, did you go too far with that language? My goodness. And then DeSantis goes, I'm going to destroy half the country's views, I guess, um, more right. than half statistically. And mainstream media is like, mm, okay. I mean, mainstream media was, I do think, outraged a little bit by that. But um, the other thing, is the IRS talking point is one that I'm so dang sick of because the whole, not the beginning of this, because I'm sure they love the idea of abolishing or de uh, reforming the IRS for a while now, because that would allow a lot of tax cheats to get away with tax cheating, uh, especially wealthy tax cheats. And uh, so I'm sure that was underlying, but it's definitely become more prominent since Biden and the Inflation Reduction Act, as we, uh, as we talked about increased funding to the irs so that they could go after wealthy tax cheats you need more resources as the irs to go after um individuals who in very complex ways get out of paying their taxes and are avoiding paying their taxes the wealthy um those are the ones with the most complex methods and so more resources uh, resources are necessary that's what biden and the democrats gave to the irs and a big talking point has been no that was to go after MAGA republicans we have to go after and uh defund the irs now DeSantis is going as far as to say abolish the irs when in reality josiah that makes everyone except the wealthy tax sheets lose because by funding the irs more we make more back in uh, extra tax revenue so we're making a profit on that legislation and it's getting tax revenue that by law should be getting paid from people that can afford it where's the downside there no yeah it's it's one of the i mean here's the reality government exists to govern right it's not a pro or for-profit business right but if that's your motivation if that's the incentive and you think for whatever reason government should function that way then you would want to protect the IRS because it's a revenue generating organ of the federal government. And by the way, the modern day complex federal government has never functioned without an IRS, right? Now, back in 17, you know, 89, when President Washington was elected, sure, we didn't have a formal IRS, but time marches on. And in 2023, even if you were to abolish the Department of Education and the Department of Commerce and all the things, I have absolutely no reason to believe that any sort of functioning federal government, Republican or Democrat, could function or survive without the IRS. So again, I'm thinking to myself, all right, Governor DeSantis, you're using a lot of buzzwords and like a lot of Facebook meme style policy prescriptions. But what are you going to do if you got your wish, if you could do all the things that you wanted to do? What would take its place, if anything, and if nothing was going to take its place? How would government function without it? And this, to me, I guess, again, reaffirms what we talk about. The Republican Party has forfeited a claim to being a good faith governing party. And I think DeSantis's words here are reflective of that. He's generally seen as a more policy rich politician than somebody like Trump. He's generally seen as more competent, a more sophisticated politician. Um, and yet he is all he's doing is dealing with trafficking and buzzwords and Facebook memes and the most niche, you know, hyper right wing talking points. They are not a governing party. Yes. And I think yes. we just need to accept it. Yes. And that's exactly the point that I want to make sure we mentioned before uh, wrapping up this segment. If you run on the government being broken, then it's very politically effective for you to break the government. And what DeSantis is saying here is I'm going to make sure certain institutions and entities within our government aren't able to function because they're gotten rid of, or I don't think he could do that, um, in other ways, attempting to underfund these programs. And that only serves to show people, look, the government's not governing effectively. And that's exactly the Republican message. But if you didn't do that, if you did properly invest in these programs, in education, in <laughs> the IRS, um, then you could see how the government could govern effectively. And it's exactly right. The Republican Party is not 
um, a governing party. And I'll put a whole lot of money on. I won't because I don't even want to wish into existence to say it's ever being president. But let's say he did become president. His big legislative accomplishment is going to be tax cuts for the wealthy. <laughs> That's going to be it, okay? <laughs> they use all these buzzwords. It's wokeism. It's, it's this, that, and the other thing. And then it's just, hey, we're going to help make the wealthy more wealthy, the powerful more powerful. I think that's absolutely the case. Uh, I think that it will be exactly the same as every Republican before him. Tax cuts for the rich. Hey, I'll even throw him a bone here, Luke. He might also want to get really creative and cram every judicial appointee with a young conservative ideologue. So it'll probably be conservative judges and tax cuts for the rich. A novel Republican strategy. We've never seen that before. <laughs> Lucky yes. Thank you so much for watching. For the outro on this video, I want to plug Josiah's channel. Hit them with it, Josiah. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you watching. You can find me at youtube.com slash at pondering politics, one word, pondering politics. If you like progressive commentary that focuses on coalition building with other elements of the left and calling the Republican Party out for what it's become, I hope you'll view my channel. Give me a like and subscribe and some feedback. Again, youtube.com slash at pondering politics. Thanks again.